What is up, everybody? It is your boy, and we are here with a music reaction for the first time in a incredibly, incredibly long time. So today, uh, we are reacting to The Games, The Black Slim Shady, a diss track on the one and only Eminem. Doesn't sound like a really uh, great idea on The Games part, but I guess we'll see how it goes. It is... Ten and a half minutes long, so we're in for the long run. This is going to be the longest song that we've ever reacted to on the channel. I just wanted to point something out real quick before we get into it. If we look over here on my screen from this, so you can uh, read it a little bit better than the tiny screen. An unofficially <laughs> uploaded version of the song that has the lyrics has more than quadruple the views of the official one uploaded by the game. And I think that's really funny. And also doing that very, uh, supports the game very little. So we're gonna watch this one <laughs> instead. I mean, if it's good, I'll give him the support he deserves and download it on a streaming service. But I have very low expectations for this and very high expectations for whatever Eminem decides to do in response to this. So we are gonna head right into this one let me move over so you can actually see me uh we're gonna head right into the black slim shady by the game hey grandma yeah i'm still out making my uber runs i'll be home soon i just got one more pickup kind of close to eight mile okay okay love you too Okay, that's a odd um odd intro to the song, I must say. Kind of uh, references to Eminem over here. Also, another thing that I want to point out before we get into the the meat of this song is that it's called the Black Slim Shady, which sounds like that's what he's referring to himself to, which would either mean that he's insulting himself or complimenting Eminem. If he's insulting himself, then obviously that's just kind of stupid. If he's complimenting Eminem, he's pulling a fucking MGK, complimenting him on a diss track. But I guess we'll see how it goes. Uh, pretty uh, low expectations yet again. Also very confused as to why the title is what it is, but whatever. I don't think they know who they fucking with. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna be the thing. It's gonna be like a high, my it's gonna be a my name is reference with the the black slim shady. But still, if he's calling himself that, is he complimenting Eminem, trying to make himself sound better by saying that, or insulting himself and making himself sound worse by saying that? Again, I feel like trying to directly find similarities between yourself and the person that you're dissing is not what you should be going for when you're dissing someone. <clears throat> but whatever, I guess. I feel like we're almost two minutes in and there hasn't really been any direct diss 
to Eminem yet, which is odd. Because I know this is supposed to be a diss track on Eminem. Not only is everybody saying that, but he said it himself a couple months before this album came out with this song. I don't know if... Uh, yeah, I, I don't get it. That, I mean, that's all I can really say so far. I don't get it. In my basement last night, I was wasted last night. I went ape shit last night. Chopped his body up and forgot where I placed it last night. Had a slice of humble pie, I couldn't taste it last night. Lost my taste and my smell. I got a Marion. Me and Dr. Fauci went to crazy girls, and then we got a party on. So <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you and Fauci did that. And that's interesting. So I I guess we are kind of getting into the bigger mentions of Eminem other than him saying that he's the black slim shady and all of that he's obviously referencing some songs over here using like words that he would use in some of his older songs uh talking about like being insane or whatever like Eminem is known for having done in the past uh I, I had a slice of humble pie I couldn't taste it last night is kind of creative I don't know if that's stolen from an Eminem song that I haven't heard. I haven't, I, or that I'm just forgetting, but I wouldn't be surprised if his only creative line is from a corny part of an old Eminem song. But I guess, I, I, I still don't see where this is dissing him, though. I mean, it's mentioning him, obviously, over, over here. This is all the I killed Dr. Dre and my... Uh, I killed Dr. Dre in my basement last night. It's all references, but I don't see the the diss. I smell like a Marion. Me and Dr. Fauci went to crazy girls, and then we got a party on. So fee five fum, I'm with forty going dumb. Not eat forty the other forty. I'm with Canadians at Drake House having a steakout, and I'm so tired of ordering takeout. What's beef? Beef is when you tell a chef to bring them steaks out. So let's play house with the Dracos and the AR. Stay the fuck up off of Stanley Grass and take a shit in their yard. And my dick stay hard when I see Lizzo on the internet. Another BBL. My dick get little on the internet. My intellect is in. What? He... He rhymed internet with internet. Actually, he rhymed on the internet with on the internet. And two lines in a row about his dick. NFTs and cryptos, I can never be a crypto. I tiptoe with my red rag around six O's. And then here he, he said, his intellect is NFTs and cryptos. That is so impressive, Mr. Game. No one cares. <laughs> uh, NFTs are such a dead trend. They're not cool. They never really were. And, I mean, crypto is just... I mean, didn't it just, like, crash and then never recover a couple months ago or something like that? I, I don't know, but I guess that's the only thing that he knows about. It's, his intellect's not rapping. It's not knowing who to diss. It's just, just NFTs and crypto. So with my red rag around six souls. Chuck? Yeah. Hey, man, let's get you out the rain. Good looking. How's your night going, bro? I'm cool, man. You don't need that, man. Nobody cares about that shit anymore. You got a charger up there with you? Yeah, for sure. It reaches all the way back there, too. Good looking, homie. Hey, y'all, I really fuck with that starter cap. That shit hard as fuck. Crazy story behind it. My brother Stan, rest in peace. What? He gave me this hat 22 years ago. Damn. I'm so... Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What the hell is this story that he's trying to tell you? It, it, I'm assuming that the, uh... He purposefully got a really white sounding guy to play this part and it sounds like it's him playing the other part here. And then it's referencing Stan. 
the whole song, obviously the whole story of it, how the character of Stan dies at the end of it. But okay, you know what? We'll, we'll see if we can get where the is all. Right. It's my favorite. Can I see that shit for a minute? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh shit! This motherfucker autographed and everything. Who signed it for you? Eminem. He used to be like this rap god. Man, me and my brother praised him. And that's when I was little. I don't really like any of his new stuff. Whoa, wait. I know where we're going. Wait, what? Okay, so it's a classic, like, take it somebody saying that they don't like Eminem's new music. Which, I'll be honest, it's not the same as his old stuff. It's different style, but I still think it's... It's enjoyable at times. I think uh, Music To Be Murdered By definitely had some highlights on it. The B-side was also actually arguably better with a couple of pretty solid songs, but I guess... I don't know. It's just kind of telling the story of Eminem. This seems to be taking place in the future? He used to be like this rap god. He sounds like he's explaining it, like the, like the guy he's talking to who doesn't know who Eminem is, which, I mean, means it would have to be somewhere far in the future. Because even if you don't like his new music, which plenty of people don't, you still know who he is. It's not like he disappeared after his good music happened. So I guess we'll we'll just keep listening. Why do you have a good? Yo, shit. Hey man, I'm driving. I'll get you there. Wait, I'll take you. I'm a fan. It's cool too, man. What is happening? Okay, so that is the game. He has a gun? I'm so confused. Okay. So, the game realizes that it's signed by Eminem, and then pulls a gun on the guy driving him. Okay. Hey man, I'm driving. I'll get you there. Wait, I'll take you. I'm a fan. It's cool too, man. Uh, you don't need to do this. Fucking road. Uh, okay. Yo, come on, man. All right. Drive. All right, all right. Drive. Go, go. Shut the fuck. All right. Ask Dre. All I got is my word, my dick, and my Mac 10. One thing you can never have is my motherfucking black skin. This ain't no suit that I wore. This ain't a mansion to hang in black. This ain't no stupid award. So, oh, he goes platinum and oh, I'm on the math with him. He got all the blackest friends. He wants to be African. Me whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So he's talking about Eminem being white. I expected that. Talks about how this is not all these accolades or whatever. And then he does the, um, Till I Collapse flow over here. I, I'll give him credit there using Eminem flows, uh, in ways that they actually fit with the beat. But again, I still don't know if that's always the, uh, the way to go when you're dissing somebody, if the flow's good. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be showing off that they have good flows. Maybe he's assuming that people that are listening to this have never listened to Till I Collapse, I, I don't know, but I guess that's his method. I mean, it sounds good for a song, I don't know if it's really good for a diss track. Oh, I'm on the map with him, he got all the blackest friends, he wants to be African, me. Left for dead on the doctor's advocate, Dre never executive produced it, I just imagined it. Oh. Okay, so he's saying, like, that Eminem wishes he were black, I guess? He's just trying to make this a whole, like, idea about how big white rappers shouldn't be a thing. I, I, I don't I don't really get it. I don't get what his whole uh, vendetta against Eminem is about. I remember he was like talking trash a couple months before this came out saying that he's better than Eminem, which is, I mean, that's blasphemous on its own, but like, I, I don't see where the, like all this like deep-seated anger to have a 10 minute diss track on Eminem is coming from because he, he doesn't seem to be saying anything other than like making it a race thing that he's white and a huge deal in the in the rap game which he didn't even mention when he was talking about 
how he's better than Eminem. He was just saying that he used to acknowledge Eminem as amazing and untouchable, but now he thinks that he's better than Eminem. But now it's a race thing when it becomes a diss track? I, I don't know, because that's not something that was mentioned prior to this, uh, this song's release. Oh, whatever. But dead on the doctor's advocate, Dre never executive produced it, I just imagined it. Oh, here goes the magic tricks, candy shops and the magic stick. D'Angelo, baby, got in shape to whip your ass again. You depressed, you just masking it. You pop an Adderall, a Vicodin, and an aspirin, but the math wasn't mathing it. So pass me the torch, because the torture in my mind, with the voice that defied rhymes, will force the blind eye to see that I was in the white Rolls Royce with five nines. When you was pretending to be the white Royce, the five nine, I just crossed the fine line. Mike just... Okay. Okay. Uh, it, that was a decent, uh, decent dig, but again, it's just him making it a, a race thing. Just saying that Eminem was pretending to be the white Royce to five. Now, he hasn't really said anything about Eminem other than the fact that he's white, and that's it. So, I, I don't know. Cross the fine line, might just force the white guy to call D12 so he can be the pork that grinds swine. And the biggest rap in Detroit, that award is Sean Dime. So uncork the Chardonnay and stick my fork in white wine. I never heard you in a club, I never heard you in a bar. 11 albums and 10 never got play inside of my car. I'd rather listen to Snitch 9 like 69 times and participate in 69s with 69 nuns than listen to you. What? What? Is he saying. He'd rather listen to 6 9 he calls him Snitch9 here, how creative. He'd rather listen to 69, he'd rather listen to 6 9 69 times, and do 69s with 69 nuns? What, why, why nuns? I... Uh, I don't he's okay so he'd rather listen to 6ix9ine although he is digging at 6ix9ine here obviously he'd rather listen to 69 69 times and do, do 69s with 69 nuns did he do that just for the alliteration or because none sounds like nine and he thinks that makes it better because it makes less sense if you were to use anything else like I, I i mean i i just don't get the point of of the of using the word nuns but then listen to you you're a karen call the cops tell them and then he calls eminem a karen A black man on your block with a Glock and he got a cock And the tattoos on his face is a star and a teardrop He's standing on a till drop and he says he can feel Pac in the air Like Phil Collins, listen to him, he's still wildin' Ah, Epstein's chasing me around Epstein Island So silence, I'm, I'm thinking uh, uh, Nothing rhymes with orange, so 50 thicky slim shake <laughs> Okay, that was kind of funny <laughs> that, Okay, that, that was kind of funny you feel pock in the air like phil collins yeah it's kind of funny but I i'm still i'm still just confused about this little last uh this last section over over here uh i'm sorry it's over here yeah um you're a karen call the cops so he's saying he's a karen and he's gonna call the cops because there's a black man on his block who's armed And has a tatted face. Siri on my iPad just tried to call 911 and I don't know why. Maybe it's illegal to listen to this so far. Not very good diss track. He's standing on a till drop and he says he can feel Pac in the air like Phil Collins. Listen to him, he's still wildin'. Ah, Epstein's chasing me around Epstein Island. So silence, I'm, I'm thinking. Nothing rhymes with orange. So 50 thicky, slim shady, please stand up. Shoot the fade with me. I love to put these hands up. A good 40 Glock, you unarmed. Drop the world on your head with one arm. This slim Haley's with me, and she's unharmed for now. Really what? 
<laughs> I'm so I'm sorry. He <laughs> so he he referenced a couple of songs over here. Uh, the uh, the real Slim Shady. So Ficky Ficky Slim Shady, please stand up. And then he said, "Drop the world on your head," which is uh, obviously a Lil Wayne song that Eminem is featured on. Uh, Drop the world. And then Dear Slim, which is a reference to Stan. And it says that Haley, who those of you, for those of you who don't know, is Eminem's daughter, is with him and unarmed for now. And then it has a woman in the background that sounds about Haley's age saying, Dad, I'm really, he's threatening Eminem's daughter. That's like the worst thing that you could do. <laughs> I mean, I guess he probably knew that. And he's probably doing this to get a response out of Eminem. He's probably, this is probably a big, like, publicity stunt. He's doing this all for attention. Because who the fuck listens to the game? He's probably showed up on maybe, like, three songs on my very, 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 very long playlist. Let's see what we got. We got that song that came out a couple months ago, Easy. That Kanye song that he's in. We got... What's that Blueface song that he's on that's kind of funny? Stop Cappin'. Uh, West Side is a song by the game that's actually pretty good. But I, I, I digress. No one listens to the game anymore, really, let's, let's be honest. He's, he's very hit or miss. I, I like his voice. He has a really cool voice, and when he incorporates that voice with cool flows, and it sounds really cool, like songs like West Side, if you don't know that song, give it a listen. It is actually a really good song. But this is not an example of one of those good songs. <laughs> 40 Glock, you unarmed. Drop the world on your head with one arm. This slim Haley's with me, and she's unharmed for now. Dad, I'm really scared. These is the deepest secrets I keep, and I be on defense, cause G's ain't supposed to fold up with all the facades I hold up. Inside of my mind, I froze up. I'm cold as COVID Ebola, the Spanish flu and Corona, the Zika virus, pneumonia is... Okay, I like, I like the way he was rhyming all of these, but he said COVID and Corona and one thing, and they're the same, the same thing, but... That flow was pretty cool, and I like the rhyme scheme with that little bit. When Corona, the Zika virus, pneumonia is deep inside my persona. On each side of my shoulders is demons chasing Jehovah. The renegade or the soldier, I really gave it to Hova. I feel 23 years still ain't penetrating the culture. You are not top five in mine, big or pot eyes. No Andre, no Nas. Stop telling white lies. Sniff a white line. This the right time. I should night vanilla ice. I'm not Mr. Nice. Okay, so... Here it's saying that Eminem's been doing it for 23 years and is not penetrating the culture, which is a lie. There are many very big rappers uh, nowadays, and even some smaller ones that have some influence from from Eminem. Like, I mean, if we're talking more recently, uh, coming up into the mainstream, Jack Harlow, obviously. Not an amazing example, because he is also just another white rapper, but Logic is a good example of Eminem's inspiration, who, those of you who follow the channel know I am a pretty big Logic fan. I would say that he's penetrated the culture a good, a good amount, I would say. And he's saying that he's not in top five in the game's eyes, uh, Biggie's eyes, or Pac's eyes. And then he's just keeps referencing the fact that Eminem is white by using other, uh, referencing other things that are associated with the word white telling white lies sniff a white line and he references vanilla ice who like vanilla ice and eminem are not the same type of rapper guy i'm crazy i'm crazy i'm not mr nice guy i'm crazy dre no i'm crazy Way to fucking go. You didn't pissed off Jimmy, Universal, and Interscope. No, nope, I got Jimmy Slim 50 and Universal, Interscope. Not 50. Oh, no. You know what, what 50 does on social media when people get into, into beef with, with him. Oh, no. I was, I was scared for him because of the diss track that Eminem might release in response, but not 50. Oh god, he's gonna be telling you to read <laughs> The Cat in the Hat. He's gonna tell you to read a page of The Cat in the Hat. And you'll probably fail at that too, just like Mayweather. <laughs> Shady. 
shadier than him. I'm crazy, crazier than Kim. So when the bat signal goes. Crazier than Kim. I don't know if that's the type of crazy that you want to reference yourself to. Goes up in the clouds above the buildings. I hope you live long enough to see heroes turn into villains. Oh, you think I'm a joker? Well, riddle me this. You love your mother? Well, I'm cleaning out your closets for you and your half brother. And I told you when I was in Detroit, I wanted to go to A Mile. Because when I was little to get some MMs, I had to walk A Miles. But you wouldn't leave the studio. Your life is on loop. That's why I'm doggy and style. Because niggas rather bump Snoop. Okay, so cleaning out closet. Lots of just references to other Eminem songs, obviously. Cleaning out my closet. I, I, I just... I feel like all of the digs have been about Eminem being white and just him saying that Eminem's not top five. I feel like he hasn't had a super creative... Dis. Like, I would say Rap Devil is far better than this so far. And Rap Devil, as a song, is pretty good, but as a diss track, not really. And I'm a lyrical 50 cow. Leave his brains all thin when the game's all in, then the chainsaw ring, ring. Hello? Hello? Page and Dr. Dre? He ain't got a lot to say. He's just kind of threatening people. <laughs> like, he's saying that he's kidnapped Eminem's daughter and... Dr. Dre, because obviously makes the sound of him like having tape over his mouth when he says, Oh, you're Paige and Dr. Dre? Man, Siri, shut the fuck up. God damn. Uh, sorry about that, but I just. I, I, I don't get it. So, he said he's like, uh, did he say lyrical 50 cal or mental 50 cal or something like that? Leave his brain all thin. Wind. The game's all, I mean, maybe that was supposed to say the word when, but that still wouldn't really make that much sense. And then he had to use some sound effects, just saying that he has a chainsaw and it makes its little onomatopoeia over here so he could finish this little, uh, rhyme scheme over here and then he threatens dr dre it's just a lot of him saying eminem you're white i'm better than you you're not top five and people that you care about are in my basement <laughs> and that's kind of been it so far and also he's just been referencing a lot of eminem songs not really dissing much with it i mean he's he's dropped the world to, like, say that he's gonna drop the world on Eminem's head with one arm, which makes it so much more impressive than Lil Wayne and Eminem doing it with two arms, although they didn't specify how many arms they were using in, in their defense. But since Curtis always do, let him write the rhymes for you. Tell him to clip the wings on my butterfly. Now he's saying that Eminem songs are ghost-written. Interesting. That's actually a, um, that's actually a diss. That's probably the most diss track-like thing that's happened in this entire song so far, to be honest. Um, claiming that Eminem has ghostwriters and that Eminem songs are not self-written, which is obviously not true. But, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll take it over not actual disses like anywhere else in the song other than just calling him white the flat tat and force him back in the cocoon and does he still rap or did he have a change of heart too the chick on the show wasn't picking me and mariah wasn't picking you so the can is blam blam and if it i don't think he he's mad about mariah carey not picking him i'm pretty sure he's happy that he's no longer in that relationship <laughs> so i don't know how uh, it's definitely not the uh the worst dig you could have taken at his love life Jam then I unjam it and wipe down my strip of pole with the head grease from your bandana. You wish you were Santana or Cam in them ten days. Do rag for ten years and never had one wave. And I okay, that's that's kind of funny. You had a do rag for ten years and never had one wave. Again, it's also kind of about the fact that he's uh, he's white, but that was kind of funny. <laughs> 
was that runaway slave that they buried in that one grave. And some say he will be back to haunt Slim Shady one day. Now I'm here, hope you're ready. This is not mom's spaghetti. This your dad was 22 when he ate Lil Debbie. He takes the cake. Cause she was only 15. So how can one not sympathize with her having you as a teen? She had to lose herself. Uh, lose yourself reference. Lose herself in the moment. But we'll get to that in a minute. We haven't heard that whole line yet. But I just wanted to pause for a second. Uh, at the fact that how Eminem's mother was a teen when she had her first child. But also the fact that. I mean, that, that is technically something very sensitive that is not terrible to dig at when you're really trying to get someone in a diss track. So I'll take it, again, over a lot of the other shit that he's been saying about Eminem this whole time, but he rhymed 15 with teen. He's not the most creative rhymer. That I, can, I can say that much. With her having you as a team, she had to lose herself in a moment, give up her dreams, just to see her son out here looking like a wigger in jeans. Yeah. He did not just say wigger unironically in a song. <laughs> I need to take this in for a moment. <laughs> Hold on. Wigger in jeans. Just to see her son out here looking like a wigger in jeans. Yeah, no, he said it. He definitely said it. <laughs> okay. Just needed that clarification. All right. Let's proceed. Little Marshall Mathers. Mad cause nobody thinks that Little Marshall Mathers. That sentiment's hard together. Let's get this shit all together. What? Wait, what? Okay, Little Marshall Mathers is mad because nobody thinks that Little Marshall Mathers. And that's kind of it. That's like a, that's like a full stop end of a sentence right there. Because this wouldn't... This does, okay, this just doesn't make sense. Together, let's get this shit all together. The picture was ripped, I fixed it, but none with me, you and Fifty. Let's stitch this shit all together. You like it, Slim? Let's get this shit all together. The picture was ripped, I fixed it, but none of none with me, you and Fifty. Let's stitch this shit together. You like it, Slim? So he. I guess he's referencing the fact that he's repaired relationships before and uh, uh, in the uh, example of the pictures being ripped and he fixed them but none with him Eminem and 50 Cent I, I, I don't get right here if he's saying that there were never ties between them or if he just purposefully did not repair ties with them either way it does make sense I guess but I mean, it's an interesting metaphor, I guess. I made it just for you. I even kidnapped Stan's brother and baited him in for you. But you're okay, th another reference of him just kidnapping people. And Stan Stan's a fictional character, so is his brother. So that's what that little thing that we heard was. Um, when he pulled the gun on Stan's brother uh because he was uh he used to be an Eminem fan I uh, I don't know just say no probably leave us in the blistering cold god made you damn near perfect he just missed your soul you ain't a shell of who you used to be and after you it's me on a Uzi spree like it's too hold on i definitely just missed something here god made you damn near perfect he just missed your soul. See, like, that's an MGK type thing. It's a diss, but it's a compliment within a diss. He's saying that he was made almost perfect, but soulless? To be, and after you, it's me on a Uzi spree like it's two of me. And Matthew's dead now. It's just you and me. The sweatpants, the dad hat, do-rag, and no jewelry. Another just threat at life i'm assuming matthew here either i'm missing uh, a reference or somebody i'm unsure about or this is the name of stan's brother that he made up i don't know um is that cultural appropriation ask paul if it's even appropriate for me to make that statement rude of me <laughs> that th like that's kind of funny because there's that ongoing joke that um paul 
at I believe Interscope is very uh, protective of Eminem's brand, but Eminem is always a brand risk. It's kind of part of his brand in a way, if you know what I'm saying. So it's always like asking Paul if it's appropriate or Eminem making lines in songs, talking about how other lines in songs uh, Paul was not a big fan of because of how risky they were. So that that's kind of funny. I'll, I'll give the game that. How you date with did you read your beard or get another facelift or do shrooms in your mom's yeah. basement until you nod and see spaceships and the aliens inside it come and tell you your talent's wasted then you wake up and you ain't shit i know you're fiending for a dr dre base it how ironic and add it in the basement and now i chronic because i didn't had it with the fake shit you never understood ebonics or cadence and now i chronic that i mean I guess it, it doesn't matter if something doesn't make full sense if you get what he's trying to say. But it doesn't sound right. But he is obviously making another reference, but still, it doesn't, it doesn't sound right. R regardless of whether you could get what he's saying, it doesn't sound right. Ebonics or cadence. And he's saying he never understood Ebonics or Cadence, which is, I mean... Have you heard some of Eminem's flows on some of his songs? He definitely understands it. He, I'd say even more so in his new stuff than his old stuff, the flows are um, quite impeccable because he now has that whole shtick that kind of uh, started with Rap God that he'll, every time he's uh, featured or has an album, there'll be at least one little bit or verse that he will rap incredibly fast but to a point where you can understand every single word that he's saying. I think he understands Cadence quite well. I press everything like a weight bench. And every time the plate hits, you offer another playlist. Sorry it ain't working out. Niggas shooting Billy Blaze. Uh -uh, it's my winning speech. While I'm here, I should really thank him. Okay, so that 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 was that was pretty good. I, I liked that. That sound that sounded nice. Where over here he said, I'm sorry I'm skipping back to, I figured if, it would be easier for me to explain the lyrics to you if you also had them on your screen to, to read them. Also then I won't mess them up by uh, slightly misquoting them so I can have them word for word over here. But right here he's saying that he presses everything like a weight bench and every time the plate hits you off another playlist. So he's like pressing everyone and everything about everything. Especially, obviously, in this case, Eminem. He's pressing Eminem about everything. And every time the plate hits, again, part of the metaphor of him pressing everything like a weight bench. Uh, every time he takes a dig at Eminem, someone's removing Eminem from their playlist, I guess. That... I press every thing like a weight bench. Okay. And every time the plate hits, you offer another playlist. So and then over here... Out. Sorry, it ain't working out. I don't know if he did this on purpose. Usually, if it could be interpreted as something creative, it's typically done on purpose, but you never really know. But he makes that reference to working out, to exercising, and then says, sorry, it ain't working out, which is obviously a, um, what's the word for it? An idiom uh, that uh, uses the same words as would also mean exercising because working out in this case has two meanings so that that was i kind of like that 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 was nice niggas shooting billy blaze uh -uh, it's my winning speech while i'm here i should really thank mgk ugk tech nine uzi spray my other 12 personalities wasn't really in the mood today hi kids here's some fun let's all say nigga once Cra interesting uh, again, another reference to an Eminem song. Obviously, my name is the beginning. Let's all say nigga once. Crash the car, hit and run. Jumped out, hit the gun. Your fans want a rap guy? Well, fuck it. I'ma give him one. I came to put Slim in the box, but he already living one. Mr. Shady, don't be shady. Pick that pin up, don't be lazy. Why was he having something that sounds like a hook nine and a half minutes into the song? Up Dre and get that Dre beat. Off stage if shit get crazy Mr. Shady, don't be shady Pick that pin up, don't be lazy Call up Dre and get that Dre beat Jump off stage if shit get crazy No, that was not it I'll give 
credit for one big one major thing in the song obviously there are a few parts that are pretty good pretty creative the beat was really good i like the beat Okay, and then it just plays out and fades out a little bit. Okay. That was a trip. We are 40 minutes into this fucking thing. I guess that's what happens when you're reacting to a 10 and a half minute long song. My god. I thought, I mean, I hope we're in for a treat But if Eminem ends up responding. I really hope he does. Because we always get good music when Eminem responds to a, to a diss track. Killshot is amazing and i really hope we get another one i really do but wow that song was not good <laughs> uh, first of all way too long to say not enough about eminem and obviously he was always he was speaking about eminem for most of it but kind of just very redundantly saying the same shit over and over and over and over you're white I have somebody that you care about in my basement. Uh, I killed this person. I killed that person. I also kidnapped this person. This person's also in my basement. You're white, by the way. I'm better than you. No one thinks that you're top five. Uh, you're white, by the way. I have your other family member in my basement. And you're also white. That's, <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> the summary of the whole song in way less than ten and a half minutes. In, uh, to be fair, I kind of summarized that pretty masterfully. Overall, as a song, I would maybe give this like a four and a half out of ten. As a diss track, I'd give it maybe a three. Maybe less than a three. It was not a very good diss track. Like, other diss tracks on him, obviously, more recently, if we're talking FGK, Rap God is actually a pretty good song. I like that song a lot. That's probably like an eight out of ten song. Again, as a diss track, I, I, maybe a five. <laughs> not a great diss track. Pretty good song, though. Pretty good song. This is just not it, man. This is just not it. And then if we're talking even more recently, when Nick Cannon had that set of diss tracks with all his little buddies from Wildin' Out, those were just terrible. Those weren't good songs or good diss tracks, kind of like this one, but they were far worse than this one because it's Nick Cannon. <laughs> but... Yeah, I didn't enjoy this at all, but I'm very looking forward to a response from Eminem. I really hope it does happen. Let me know what you thought about this. If you liked it, tell me why. <laughs> if you agree with the game, tell me why. And that is about it. I will see you guys in the next video. Deuces.